Welcome to a treasure box tutorial. I'm Shari Philomahala here at the Graphic 45 headquarters and today I'm excited to teach you how to take our chipboard kit and turn it into this gorgeous treasure box. This of course has been created for us by the wonderful Annette Green. She has created the SVG file that we turned into this gorgeous uh, chipboard kit. And she's also decorated it using our Club G45 supplies. So this is uh, Club G45 volume three for 2021. And in this kit this month, you are gonna get the wonderful Voyage Beneath the Sea 12 by 12 deluxe collector's edition. In our Deluxe Collector's Edition, you get 24 double-sided sheets, and you get two cardstock sticker sheets that are six by 12 inches each. You're also going to get a decorative chipboard sheet that's also six by 12 inches. That's got a lot of really great um, sayings and images to really pack a punch and some dimension to your projects. And then of course, um, every month we give you a, a project sheet that's got colored photos and step-by-step -step directions and um, this month we're also going to be using our brand new um, decorative metal clocks these are not yet available for you um, we had these special ordered just for these kits and then they will be um, in stores and on our online shop I believe late April early May so you can find them then and then um, of course you're gonna get that chipboard kit Along with this treasure box, Annette has also created this hidden hinge um, accordion album that fits perfectly inside our treasure box. And you even have extra room for other uh, mementos and treasures from uh, your trips or travels or whatever you're gonna store in your treasure box. So we encourage you to hop on over to our website g45papers.com and uh, you can either become a subscriber or you get a kit like this as sent to you every month in the mail or you can just pick up this kit and um, create along with us of course if you are just picking up the kit you want to hop on over there sooner than later and pick those up because they do sell out each month so you'll uh, want to do that quick and you can also check out our store locator um, for a G45 retailer near you who carry our products for our club kits. But of course, um, if you wanna follow along, learn some new techniques, uh, I will give you the measurements for the chipboard pieces so you can uh, use your own chipboard sheets and then cut them accordingly and follow along with us and use your own papers so you don't have to have the kit to do this tutorial also. Um, so let's go ahead, pick up your decorative papers, your chipboard, and let's create this magical treasure box. So we are going to need to start creating this DIY treasure box. We have our chipboard kit here and our step-by-step -step, uh, project sheet as well. If you um, haven't picked up the kit, you can pick up this project sheet on our website uh, for free. It's an easy printable uh, document that you can get at g45papers.com. Just go to the inspiration tab, tab on the top right and go all the way to the bottom to uh, project sheets. And there you'll find over 30 different project sheets that you can print out. Um, this volume three, Voyage Beneath the Sea, Treasure Chest and Stowaway album being one of them. And then, um, but if you are a club member or you picked up this kit, uh, you already have a pre-cut kit like this and it'll be a cinch to put together. Otherwise, I will give you the measurements as we go along so you can cut uh, these pieces out of um, chipboard at home as well. Step one, you're gonna locate the largest scored piece in your chipboard set. And we are going to um, score in the same direction on all those lines. So just bending, I'm bending all of mine downward. And if you are creating along with us with chipboard sheets, uh, the total um, size of this is eight and uh, 13 sixteenths by seven and three sixteenths. And then um, you're gonna want to score the first score line at, um, this is one and three eighths of an inch. This next section from there is one and a half inches. And then from that score line, you'll go three and an eighth. And from that score line, you'll go one and a half inches. And then the last section is one and three eighths of an inch. So 
once you score that, uh, you should have a piece resembling the top of our treasure box. And then you're in your kit, you've got two pieces that are shaped like a house. Um, these are a total of four and a quarter by two and a half inches. And if you are creating along with us, if you just want to mark from um, the top left one and one sixteenth in and make a mark, and then from that top corner, go down and mark again at one and one sixteenth. You'll do the same on um, both sides. And then from those marks that you make, you'll draw a line with a ruler and then trim off where you drew those lines. And that's how you'll create this chipboard piece. If you're just using the kit, you are easy breezy, ready to go. So now we're gonna take a nice thick tacky glue. Annette Green, who created this kit, suggests using this um, Aileen super thick tacky glue. So I've got my box top and my super thick tacky glue, and I'm just going to bead this along the edge of my scored top. And as you can tell, if you are following along with the instructions, this is a little bit different, which I think everything, all the pieces should fit together a little more evenly and easily this way. So go ahead and add your tacky glue like so. And then taking our house piece I am just going to start to adhere this in the shape of our piece. So I want this to be flush with my lid. Like so. And that thick tacky glue is great. Just letting us kind of inch our way into position while it's slowly getting more and more tack and grip. And then once you have it in the placement that you like it, you can go ahead and add some tape to this just to kind of let it dry in place. So you could use a washi tape or a scotch tape, something that's gonna easily come up. I'm just gonna put this down. So it just has a temporary hold. So perfect, I have that perfectly glued down so I am doing the same on the other side. I've just flipped this over. I'm adding my tacky glue to the edge. And now I can place my chipboard piece on the top and just slowly move it into the right placement. And then once again, I'm gonna use my tape to let this dry in the right placement. So I will pull off this tape before I decorate my box, but for now, it's just gonna help set everything in the right place. And now that I have my pieces drying and I've got my tape on there, to, for my added security. I'm gonna go in just with a liquid glue and just kind of close the seams on the inside. So just filling that in so I have an extra sturdy bond. Of course, 
you're going to want to use a clear liquid glue for this step or a clear drying at least. Step four, we're taking our largest uh, non-scored piece that's seven and three sixteenths by five and one eighth and our two um, large rectangular pieces that are seven and three sixteenths by three inches and these we are going to adhere up the wall so this will be the base of our box and um, if you don't have a craft mat or a non-stick surface this might be a great time to use just some of the plastic from maybe your dce bag or something else when adhering this these pieces together so So again, I'm taking that tacky glue and putting beads on the outside edge of my largest rectangle on the long edge. And then taking one of my rectangular pieces, I'm just going to push that up against that edge. And hold it. Hold it for a second, making sure it's flush with the right and left hand side. And using my finger, I'm just going to push that along the edge, making sure it's getting a good connection. Perfect. And now that's dried a little bit, I'm going to work on the other side. And I've added my bead of glue and now we can take the other wall and put it up next to this side. Making sure I'm flush again with the top and bottom and then let that sit into place for a minute to dry and then once it's dried not dried all the way but dried a little bit you can go ahead and take a piece of that scotch tape we've been using and tape it into place until it's dried all the way course I'm just going to fill in my seams again. Now we're going to adhere on our other two walls. These are three inches by five and six, three inches by five and five sixteenths. So just taking that tacky glue again and I'm going to go along those all three edges of our box that we've created so far. And now I've got all of my adhesive on my edge and I can just put my box side down. And now I put my box flat on the counter, which is going to help me really connect all three of these sides. So now I've got the perfect placement on there. I'm going to add a little bit of tape to the outside. And now I've added some tacky adhesive to the last side of my box and my last rectangular piece is just going to fit on top nice and easy. And now I'm just going to go in with my art glitter glue adhesive and put in another thin line. Just kind of like 
caulking, bathtub, or cementing in, making sure that when this all dries nice and clear, it's gonna be so sturdy and beautiful. Now that my lid has dried, I am going to just peel off my scotch tape pieces and I can put this on top of my box that we created. So we have got the bottom and the top and they are fitting beautifully together. Then I'm gonna take a strip of packing tape that's a little bit smaller than our box and I'm just selecting which side I want to be my front and which side I want to be my back. On the back hand side, I'm going to add my packing tape. Um, halfway onto my lid, like so, and halfway onto the box. So making sure everything is where I want it to be before I push down on that. And not to worry because we are going to be adding paper over the top of this. This is just to add an extra structural element. And then just lightly with your finger, just get out any air pockets you can. Like so. And if you have any scotch tape left on the bottom of your box, you can take that off now that everything is dry. And then for step seven, we are taking a piece of craft cardstock, and this is gonna be seven and one eighth of an inch by two inches. And then we've scored it just in half at one inch. Of course, um, you could just fold it in half if you don't wanna pull out your scoreboard for that. And then we're going to add some adhesive to one side of this, and then adhere this inside of our box, creating some more strength on the inside so when you open and close your treasure box for years to come it's nice and sturdy so this is just gonna go inside and then I'm opening my lid up about at a 90 degree angle and adhering one side to the lid and one side to the box on the inside. Step nine, from one sheet of Deep Blue Dreams, we're cutting the following strips. We've got two strips that are seven and a quarter by one and a half. We have one that's seven and a quarter by one and three eighths. On your project sheet, it does say um, one and five eighths, but um, that's a, just a typo. It should be seven and a quarter by one and three eighths. And then you've got five pieces that are seven and a quarter by one inch. And then one piece that's seven and a quarter by two and three eighths of an inch. And um, we do want, if you can, to try to keep these stripes all nice and vertically aligned. That way when you're putting your, um, box together it'll kind of resemble a wood plank and it'll look nice and neat. Step 10 from a second sheet of Deep Blue Dreams we're going to cut out six pieces that are going to be five and a quarter by one inch. We're going to cut out two pieces that are going to be five and a quarter by two and a half and one piece that will be seven and a quarter by three and one eighth. And then we're going to take all these pieces that we cut and using a coordinating ink, we're going to ink those edges. I'm using the Graphic 45's um, Decades ink in dark cashmere. However, um, Clearsnap, who creates this ink for us, went out of business last year, so if you have it, you can use it. Otherwise, just use a coordinating ink. I like brown because um, since we're doing a treasure box, it has a nice contrast that you can see. And so we do want to be 
if you have any any inks that go along with it at all um, i do think it is worth it to ink up these um, strips because they are going to really help bring home those like wooden panels of our treasure chest home and really make it look exceptional and make each little plank stand out and just to show you how Annette inked up hers so you can see adding that ink really makes each of those areas really stand out and beautiful so I've inked all my edges that was a lot of work but it'll totally be worth it for step 11 we're going to adhere our five and a quarter inch pieces five and a quarter inch by two and a half inch pieces to the top side of our lid so I'm just going to add adhesive directly onto my lid on my side piece like so and then I will adhere this piece flush with the bottom edge and the right and left and I'll do the same with the other side now it says to trim off these corners so you could do that um, with scissors or an exacto knife however you want I'm gonna just do it with my fine tip scissors and easy breezy and once you've trimmed out your quarters if you have any excess like I do about I don't know it's about a sixteenth of an inch excess I'm just going to trim to fit the top as well and then take your uh, file full your nail file or your sanding paper and you can even smooth out those edges even more if you would like Once you've done that, you can take your ink and just ink those edges up to match the rest. Now on step 11, we're working from the top of our lid to the front down. And I've got this piece that's seven and a quarter by three and one eighths inch. And this baby is just going to go right on the top and right in the center once you find the placement you like you can go ahead and burnish keeping in mind you don't want to put too much pressure on this especially if your pieces are all still a little bit wet drying. Next, we've got a seven and a quarter piece by one and a half inch. It's gonna go right in front next to the top. Then we've got our seven and a quarter by one and three eighths inch piece and that's going on our very front of our lid now we are going to flip our box around and then working from the top down we've got our last seven and a quarter by one and a half inch piece and that's going to go right next to our top center so then we're going to skip this taped area and we're going to start working on the bottom we've got our seven and a quarter by one inch strips ready to go and 
this will adhere flush to the bottom and the right and left hand side. And then working up, we will just adhere our next strip there. Step 14, we are going to score this piece that is um, two and three eighths by seven and a quarter. So I've put it in on the two and three eighths side and I'm just going to score at one inch. Go ahead and fold on that score line. And then using the same ink we've been using to ink our edges, we are just going to ink on this score line so it will create the same effect where it'll look like a different wood plank, but it'll actually just be one piece of paper. Genius little tip from Annette. So it gives us the strength of being one piece without having to jeopardize it. So now we can apply this to the back edge. So when I'm adhering this down, I want my top edge to be flush with the top of my paper. And I might be overlapping a little bit on the, my bottom planks. You can see just a tiny bit, but it's going to look better to overlap on the bottom base of our box than up here because that would just be overhanging off this edge. But there you have it. It's looking super cute. What a nice little treasure box so far. Next, we're taking these five and a quarter inch by one inch strips for step 17 and we are going to do the same process just on the side of our box. Again when we get to this top ledge it's more important to be flush with the top of your box than it is to be overlapping over your planked papers so keep that in mind when adhering this top piece. So it's flush with the top and overlapping just a bit on my paper, but looking good. And then repeat the process on the other side. And then with the last three seven and a quarter by one inch strips, we will apply these to the front of our box flush with that top. looking so cute and magical. So we would love to hear what you are going to be putting in your treasure box or what papers you're using. I think this would be a super cute pay, uh, project done in some pink papers to make a little pink princess treasure chest. You could also do it with some nice brown papers to give it a realistic wood feel. I love seeing this in our new catch of the day paper. We've got a blue, a wood grain paper in that, which I think would look so stunning done up in this project. Step 19, if you've already done the album, you've cut out uh, two pieces that were eight by six inches. So we uh, cut from the eight inch side and then had two pieces um, from there. And then you have this section left over and that's what we're going to be uh, cutting our pieces, our step 19 pieces from is this leftover. So if you haven't done the album yet, but you do want to do both projects, uh, you can go ahead and cut um, on the right hand side, just cut off uh, four inches from the right hand side and then put this eight by 12 inch piece to the side for your album. And then we'll be using this for step 19. So for step 19 from Aquatic Passage, we are going to have four vertical borders that are three inches each. And you can see they've got the orange on both sides and the seahorses in the center. And then we're going to also going to do four pieces that are also three inches that are the double border. So they've got three of those orange stripes and the two seahorses on those double borders. So it is really crazy outside hailing so I'm sorry if that is really loud but we're gonna keep moving on so for step 20 we've got aquatic passage our second sheet and we've cut out four vertical borders that are nine and one eighth inch and we have two that are three inches and six that are two and a half 
step 21, we're gonna take these double borders, we've got four of those, and we're just gonna fold those in half. These are gonna be our corner structure pieces. Now we are going to adhere these corner pieces onto the base of our box. So just flush with the top and both sides. Just I'm putting one hand behind on one side and burnishing down with my finger on the other. And we'll do the same on all four corners. And you can see this seahorse is upside down. However, it's right side up over here and upside down and then right side up. So you kind of have to pick, there's gonna be one right side up and one upside down on each grouping, but kind of makes it a little more interesting. For step 23, I'm taking two of our longest border strip pieces that are nine and an eighth. And I have added my liquid adhesive to the back. And now I'm just slowly working this along my edge. So I'm now working on my uh, right hand side. But if you want, if you're working on your right or left, you just want it to be flush with that edge. So it's covering up all of our chipboard, giving us a perfectly neat little treasure box. You know, most of our Graphic 45 paper collections have a great paper in them that has features either a whole page of borders or at least a lot of borders, which I know uh, my mom, Diane, who is the founder and head designer of Graphic 45, she loves these border pages for reasons like this. So it really takes your projects to the next la level giving out that beautiful polished look with minimal effort. So, so super cute so far. Step 24, we're gonna take two of our two and a half inch border pieces, and these are gonna go right here on the side. So I want this to be a flush with the edge of my box and going straight up like so. I'll do the same thing over here. I'm just using this border strip as my guide and not putting adhesive on my strip this time because it does overhang as you can see here. That way I can trim it off without having a bunch of glue over there. So I'm gonna do the same to the other side as well. And then I'll let them dry a little bit before I do any trimming. So while we wait for those to dry, I'm gonna take my last two, two and a half inch strips. And these little cuties are gonna go right in the center of the side of our lid. Put one on that side and one on the other. Now taking your scissors, let's trim off the excess of our two and a half inch pieces. So now our sides are looking beautiful like this. Next, we're gonna put our three inch borders on the base. And I can see that this is just gonna be a tiny bit too big. So I'm just gonna trim it now before I adhere it just about a sixteenth of an inch. You can always trim or file it down after you adhere it on, but I find it, if you know that it's going to need some trimming, it's easiest to do that before you adhere it down. And then adhere the other side down and just make sure that you're matching up your lid to the base of your box. Then add two three inch borders on the front spaced evenly. Then take your last two long 
9 and an eighth inch strips and match those up with your front of your box those three inch pieces we just put down and then just slowly wrap those around the lid of your box and if it's going to impede on opening your box you can trim off any excess then take your last two three inch strips and these go on the back and now we're going to do a little bit of decorating so taking our decorative metal clocks we're going to add some twine into either side you could also use um, some waxed cord anything that's going to fit into these tiny little holes here i've just folded my twine in half and threaded it through that hole i guess you could use embroidery floss as well or you could just leave them blank because these pieces are so so cute that they're going to look great no matter what and then we'll just pull that down to knot it and then trim it off there and then we'll do the same with the other side and then we'll just adhere these onto our large decorative i'm really a mermaid chipboard piece making sure our clocks are right side up and then we'll go ahead and let that dry and then with foam adhesive we are going to adhere these cute little tabs on the side of our box lid right in the center flush with the bottom they kind of will look like little handles for our trunk and then we'll do one on the other side as well so cute and then we'll adhere this down and we're just going to adhere the top half onto our lid front and then once you like the placement you can take some clips and clamp it into place while it dries I hope that you had as much fun at creating this treasure box as we did I can't even believe the opportunities and endless ideas that I can think of that you could use this box for or different paper collections you could use uh, decorating it. So be sure to share your projects with us on Instagram using that graphic 45 hashtag. And if you're looking for more fun tutorials like this one, perhaps you're looking for this fun accordion hidden binding album, um, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel and then hit that notification bell. So you are notified every time we upload a fun and fabulous tutorial like this one. You can find the link for this album below also. So thanks so much for joining us. As always, happy paper crafting.